accuracy and the department of english of hr college of commerce and economics in collaboration with the iqac and the department of business communication of siws nr swami college and shrimati tirumalai college of science my name is kashish tadi and i along with dipasha roy will be a host for this evening our topic for today is mla 9 and overview and with this i would like to invite our speaker for this evening dr nilakshi roy ma'am a warm welcome to you thank you i would now like to take this opportunity to welcome the principal of hr college dr pooja ramchandani ma'am and the principal of siws college dr sunita shirvalkar i would like to extend my warm welcome to the faculty and the participants who have joined this workshop I would now like to invite Dr. Kirti Nagare, ma'am, to brief us about the day two of the workshop, and also welcoming the guest speaker, Dr. Nilakshi Roy, ma'am, for day two of this workshop. Over to you, Kirti, ma'am. Thank you so much, Kashish. Uh, a warm welcome to you, uh, Dr. Nilakshi Roy, and thank you for having accepted our invitation, and uh, you know, for having. so nicely uh, so uh, uh, so openly having thought of you know doing the citations the mla and then giving an overview on apa and other citation styles about our workshop it is titled research requisites a workshop for teachers uh, yesterday uh, i'll i'll quickly brief you about what we did yesterday the session was titled understanding the research process this was done by dr suman munkur who is a research consult consultant and who herself runs an academic research consultancy service uh, dr suman very nicely very comprehensively dealt with steps in academic journal publishing right from topic selection uh, literature survey review of literature review of literature to plagiarism check and uh, submissions for publication then she moved on to deal with uh what leads to acceptance of one's work uh to different types of publications various publishers online and offline journal indexing choice of uh yeah the choice of journals and she concluded with the detailed review process that takes place at the publisher's end uh it was very comprehensively planned session it was tailor made to suit the needs of researchers at the current hour today we have with us uh, professor dr nilakshi roy and the session today's session is titled mla 9 and overview now as we all know citation is actually the structure which helps us to uh, you know stand or face the challenges of reviewers and we also can prove the authenticity of our work with a properly cited uh, paper i mean the citation is the heart of any research publication so to deal with the topic we have dr nilakshi roy who is a retired she is a retired head department of english of vaze college mulun mumbai where she has been teaching since 1988 she has specialization in indian writing in english by women writers of the diaspora and has ma many publications and has presented many papers at national and international conferences on migration and the vast area of culture studies she ha had founded an organization called culture all with her students and has conducted several cultural awareness programs as part of that She is an active member and one of the spokespersons of the Swikar Rainbow Parents Group. Thank you very much, ma'am, once again for having accepted our invitation. Uh, I request you to now take over and start with your session. Over to you, Nilakshi, ma'am. Thank you. It's very humbling to. Uh, just a moment. Just a moment, uh, ma'am. Before we before we start with the session, if we could pause for a photograph, I yes. request all participants to kindly switch on their videos so that we can have a quick picture and then we can proceed with the 
session. Is that right, Geeta? Yes, that's right. And we would also like to uh, welcome our yesterday's speaker. Suman ma'am has also joined us. So welcome, ma'am. Welcome, Dr. Suman. Thank you so much. Today's uh, session is an extension to what you did yesterday. So thank you very much for your presence today. Can I continue? Yeah. Can I continue, Geeta? Geeta, uh, are we through? Is uh, this? Uh, Anna, uh, we, uh, no, I, I think we still need to take the photograph. Can I please okay. request everyone to switch yes. on the cameras? Yes. Are we good to start, Brianna? Yes, ma'am. All good. Okay. okay. Thank you, Neelakshi, ma'am. And it's over to you. I, it is a very humbling experience to be called back by uh, both your colleges and uh, the, the academic body, which thought it worthwhile to call a person like me who is not really doing much in the area of academics except for guiding two students who uh, uh, are also uh, with me here today on the uh, as part of the audience, as I can see. So uh, it's very humbling because, uh, you know, MLA 9 is something recent. And I have also learned it uh, along with my students. In fact, I have borrowed two of my students' presentations to make this presentation. And I will be highlighting the things which I find my students struggling with uh, when I do this uh, presentation. My target audience is the absolute beginner. Okay, so Suman ma'am and others, sorry if you're expecting anything more, I am just targeting the, the baseline beginner who is uh, struggling with uh, citation, doesn't know what this means, what that means, doesn't know what is um, really in-text citation, what is the meaning of this, what is the meaning of that, I'm, I'm really targeting that uh, baseline, okay. So uh, that was my brief. So that's what I'm doing. Like I'm, I'm really addressing the uh, beginner in academics. Okay. So after your uh, very, um, I'm sure very uh, productive exchange with uh, Dr. Suman, uh, this would be something very simplistic, but uh, I hope it will help you uh, sail through uh, citations when the time comes. Um, I hope to, if there is time, I hope to give you a kind of a very brief two slide compare and contrast between the APA and the um, Chicago style and the MLA style, just the basics and the differences, because I also have not really practiced writing in either of the styles. So I wouldn't like to do more than uh, you know I am capable of. So um, shall I then start uh, sharing my screen? Yeah, let me come to the presentation. Yeah, please uh, enable the screen sharing. Uh, I'm requesting the host. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. It's not done yet. So yeah, done. It's done. Yes. <clears throat> Right, so I'll first uh, begin with, uh, you know, I'll come to the brass tacks of this presentation, the absolute beginning, and uh, take you through. Let me see how it works. Um, I would have really liked to know uh, what are the, you know, the expectations of the audience before I address this. Uh, are there any of you who are uh, veterans in writing papers? If there are many who have written a lot of papers, then I will, of course, keep addressing it to you as well. I mean, I know that the audience is not full of only people who are writing for the first time. So are there many people in the audience who have written many papers and got published? Yes, ma'am. Wonderful. OK, so I will remember you. Don't worry. You won't be bored. OK, so uh, this, as I say, is a presentation which I have borrowed from two of my students who are now PhD holders. They've recently passed their uh, PhD. This was what they had done during their research uh, uh, tenure uh, at Vazi College Research Center. So they are Umangi Mehta, Dr. Umangi Mehta and Dr. Udayan Chakrabarti. And they're very happy that I'm sharing these contents. I have already spoken to them about this. 
Yeah, so the MLA is, of course, the Modern Language Association. You might have heard something about it yesterday when Suman Ma'am was talking to you. And it provides uh, universal conventions for researchers so that scholars can understand each other. For the beginner, yeah, this is the same. Yeah, the beginner level uh, understanding that scholars can understand each other. That's why, how are they doing, what they are doing in the, in the paper? Hmm? Because as you're writing, you are not supposed to be explaining what you're doing. Okay, the things that you do by way of citation and by way of, you know, indexing or uh, your bibliographic references should tell you what you're doing. Okay, so these conventions are held, they are like little codes embedded in your research paper, which helps to standardize the citation and which helps scholars to access each other's words. The most important thing is, uh, it provides a kind of a venue for acknowledging another person's work, works, you know. So that is something which you are now compelled to do, right? You know, plagiarism is a very serious uh, academic offense and you're not supposed to do that. So when I share the articles with you, you will see the proportion of quotations, whether it is from the text or whether it is from any academic work, should be seriously, you know, in, in not skewed. And it should, there should not be more quotations in your writing than your, uh, you know, actual original thought. Also, please remember that your uh, contribution in a particular article is a kind of a new perspective to what others have thought about before you. So you are like giving a nod to all the scholarship that has gone on before you and your writing is just one step further. So you'll have to have to acknowledge all the work that has been done before, if that is humanly possible. It's not possible. So at least a, a few of the articles written in your paper, which are, which are accessible online or which are available in most of the major libraries, which are there in the key journals that you are supposed to study during your uh, research work. These are some of the you know, basic courtesies that, that you must uh, you know, participate in. So this comprehensive guide to research, which we call the MLA, uh, you know, different versions, now we are going through MLA 9, are, uh, you know, a sort of a, a kind of a code book, a kind of a key to understanding um, others' research work and helping to quote. So this is uh, what I'm going to show you at first, the article as it looks when it is published. And I've just explained the different parts that there are on that, uh, in that article. <clears throat> okay. So <clears throat> when, when you publish the article, then uh, it looks like this, it, there is the abstract with an affiliation. Ma'am must have explained all this to you. It means the gist of the article with details of the writer and her designation, where she works, etc. It also then has keywords, you know, either five or 10, depending on the decision of the, of the journal publisher, uh, five main words used in the article, which would help someone locate the article very easily and to, to source it on the web. Um, it also contains the text of the article, the main thing, you know, the, the main article, the title and the whole article with insight. There may be notes, now, uh, very short footnotes and end notes are usually allowed, but mostly encouraged by publishers, editors, and organizations. In, say, for example, in literature PhDs, we do not allow, uh, you know, uh, notes, end notes, and footnotes. But in history, I believe they do allow. They they need it absolutely for um, their work. Uh, work cited is, of course, where you put all the information of the books that you have actually referred to or quoted from in the article. Okay? You can give a, a bibliography, which is a slightly bigger list in which you share the names of the books that you have read separately. But the work cited is something in which the books which you have referred from, which you have quoted from, are mentioned. Okay, so that is that is one of the important things which you should remember. Not just any book, you know, just to impress the examiner, you're not going to put everything that you have read under the sun. Only what you have quoted from that must be there in your work cited. A bibliography may also be attached for additional proof. You know. Now, I have a link here to the sample paper, which I will show you shortly, but I just want to, uh, you know, um, share the sample paper with you at the end. Um, and uh, maybe I will share it with Kirti, who can share uh, the sample papers with you. Um, 
the, the sample papers uh, should be read very well by the beginners, those who are finding it difficult to write. Sometimes those who know or are familiar will also benefit from this because you know it uh, makes the writing very clear. I'll just show this sample paper, which is from the MLA 8, but not much difference. I, I just want to show you because it's a sort of a cleaner paper, if you understand what I mean. Okay, I'll show it to you. Okay, so this is an article hmm? and how it looks. This does not have the abstract, but this is just the paper. See the way it looks. Now, now do you see all those who are new to article writing or paper writing? See how quotation. Uh, Ma'am, yes. Uh, can can everyone see it? I can't see the paper. Okay. Yes, can no, 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 I can't see. Yeah, it's not visible, ma'am. Not ma'am, it's not visible. Okay. Um, how do I do this then? Um, wait, I'll just uh, pause one screen and then I will share the other screen. Is that so? Is that possible then? I think. Or maybe. if we could, uh, I do not know how how we could do it. Wait, is it, it's a clickable link, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you could click and then once it opens, because we can't see it. It, it hasn't opened for us. Okay, one minute. Mm -hmm. I have clicked and it had opened only, then the, then only I could show you. Wait, I'll just uh, do stop share and I will share it. Hmm? Yeah, I think that it will work that way. Yeah. Now it's it's visible, ma'am. We can Are see paper, it now. Paper visible? Yes, yes, we, we can see it now. Okay, now also, I mean, I just... Uh, no, now we can only see you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, I think it's visible. Okay. Yes, so, now we can see it. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you yes. so much. So, um, am, is this the right way I'm going about things? I just want to ask you as an audience, is this okay for you? I mean, those who are new to writing, is this going to be beneficial? Do you understand what I'm saying? Am I going too fast? Or whatever. Yes, ma'am, okay. it's useful. It's perfect. Okay. perfect. Fine, fine. Yes. So, yeah. So, you see, uh, things are there in, in brackets. Things are there in uh, quotation marks. These are what you call citations, you know. So, uh, 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 things in a quotation mark followed by a name and a number or preceded by a name and followed by a number. Okay. These are, see, there is a little bit of a, um, you know, a footnote or an end note here. There is a raised one, as you can see, after family objections. These are what make up citations. Okay. So when you're writing, you have to remember these. These are the practicalities of writing. You can't be just writing highfalutin ideas or theories, but you have to remember how to contextualize them, how to place them in a certain academic thread of discussion and also how to annotate them. Like, see here, Austin, comma, Mansfield Park, page five. That's what this means. Jane Austen, Mansfield Park, page five. So it's just simplified into Austin, comma, Mansfield Park, and space, and five. Hmm? Um, in MLA 8, there is no comma after the text. There is a comma after the author, and after the, uh, 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 and then the text, and after that, the page comes directly. Once you have mentioned this, the next time in the same paragraph, you don't mention the text again. Actually, the next time in the article, if nothing else is mentioned in between, if no other book is referred to, you can go on just putting the page number. Many times, shorter articles are written about one or two uh, books. So at that time, you don't have to, uh, you know, Con continuously write Austin, Mansfield Park, whatever. This is a very short article. This uh, uh, you know, writer has con continuously quoted from uh, Jane Austen's Mansfield Park, a particular edition. So then she has only mentioned, uh, see like here, 75, just the page number of that book, okay? So that is what you have to do. You have to put the page number of the book when you are immediately when you put a inverted comma. So I've been guiding my students and telling them, please don't use inverted commas other than necessary, because that means that, you know, you will flunk your plagiarism test. And secondly, you will not be you know, giving uh, due um, respect to the person you are quoting from, or it would appear you're quoting from somewhere and the reader will not know, the examiner will not know where you're quoting from. Okay, so please remember. You call uh, Milakshi, ma'am. 
Yeah. There is a, a, a there is a question here in place of uh, quoting the page number of the same text. Uh, can we use IBID in place of the page they number? Are, they are dis, dis, they are discontinuing uh, you know the the use of IBID as much as possible. IBID IBIDM they are okay. uh, discontinuing. You will not find the use of IBID uh, nowadays anymore. Okay, okay. so it's replaced with the page number. Encouraging the page number. IBID okay. comes. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, IBIT can still come if page number five is again repeated here, page number five. That's okay. You okay. use IBIT or okay. IBIDM if there are two quotations in one line separated by, uh, you know, words, then IBIDM would come, but otherwise no. So, you know, I at least try to see to it that my students uh, avoid that as much as possible by not quoting from the same page over and over again separately like you know like that mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. is one. that is one but you if you have to quote then you know you can use it they are trying to discourage the use of ibid as much as possible that's right you can okay. look at the finer annotations of uh, MLA 9, but um, I have been following it since MLA 8 and they have been discouraging the use of ibid thank you thank you ma'am Okay, so now see, there is a quotation within a quotation, okay? At that time, see, there is a quotation within a quotation there, the brackets have changed, okay? So like this, you know, you have to be very sensitive to what you are really doing during your writing. When you have quoted someone else, then quoted in and then mention it, okay? So like that, the citation is something that keeps on, uh, you know, helping you to understand how the referencing has been made. I think that is where I would like to stop by, uh, stop uh, giving the example of, okay? And I will go directly to the details of citation. However, I will just end with the last page of this citation of this article where you can see the work cited. So the article goes on and on and on for a few pages. And um, you can see that it is indented. You can see that quotations are indented. Can you see that? Quotations are indented. The article being mentioned earlier, okay, the, the, pay, uh, the book being mentioned earlier, the quotation ends with the page number. There is a full stop followed by the page number, but it is indented five spaces away from the margin okay um, this writer does not follow right side indentation only left side indentation and left side justification i'm sorry uh, 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 you know left hand uh, justification not the right side justification most people prefer that because they believe that it gives an easy flow of the writing rather than deliberately pushing the words in order to give you a very blocked appearance but I personally find uh, the blocked appearance more orderly. I don't know, it may be having a little thing to do with my kind of, um, uh, you know, um, a desire for neatness or uh, compulsive, uh, <laughs> obsessive compulsive disorder, something like that. So, yeah, so this is the way that the uh, article runs on. And then we come towards the end of it when um, the writer... Uh, gives you a bibliography. There are the notes first, which I, again, I'm saying uh, are re really few and the far between, um, definitely not in a PhD thesis, but in other articles, sometimes they allow, but mostly one prefers not to use notes. And then you have the work cited, okay? This also, I'm not going to do this in detail, just giving you a glimpse of what it is that uh, we were talking about. So my uh, presentation will have most of its you know, concentration on this, how to write this, and also also how to do this, okay? So the body of the right. First I will do, the work cited, I will finish that. Then again, I will share an article with you as a sample as to how this is done. And then I will go back to in-text citation. Is that clear now? Yeah. Ma'am, can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah, you can, yeah. Hello, ma'am, uh, I'm Ms. Kavalpit, I'm research scholar. Ma'am, I just wanted to know what is the difference between work cited and references? Uh, 
references may be, as I was telling you, references may be just general references where you might not have, uh, you know, actually quoted from the text. You know, you might have referred to it and you might just, just like to share without quotation, but not very professional, you know. So uh, it is better that you put uh, in references or bibliography is a safer way of saying that I've not quoted from these writers. I've just read them, you know. Okay. It's like, it's like that. But work cited will mean that you go to it for actually matching the quotations with the page numbers and all of that. So ma'am, if I'm using a definition, I'm given the name of the author, so it will be work cited? If you are using a definition and if you have given the name of the author. Name of the author as well. Uh, I mean, you no, know, see, the work cited will be a part of your general plan for the whole article. It will not okay. be for one, one reference. Okay. You have to decide in advance what you want to do. Whether okay. you want to give a big bibliography in which lots of things will be there just because you want to like, you know, you want to share how you will even find in a regular book. When you take a book for reference, you will find very often they give you references or bibliography. They give you a much bigger bibliography because they feel that the reader will benefit from reading these additional books also, which are not cited in the in that that particular book. Okay. okay. It's quite possible. No, it's quite yeah. possible. So the references or the bibliography is sort of an expanded version of the work cited, okay, where okay. it does not contain actually the uh, uh, only the, the books which have been quoted. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, now I'm trying to. Huh, yeah. So the final look of the work cited is this, you know, I've just uh, quoted here two, uh, two of the um, uh, you know, uh, two of the books uh, here, uh, and not two books, sorry, <laughs> to one book in two styles. Okay, so uh, this is the way that it can be uh, uh, presented. We are going to study this from now on for the next few slides. We are studying the work cited. Okay, so you see how the um, first, uh, uh, you know, the, the entry in that list is your uh, surname of the author followed by a comma, and then the name of the author, followed by a full stop. So that is the key to your bibliographic index. Okay, whatever you do, whether you do work cited or references or whatever, you have to go alphabetically surname first. Okay, so this convention is uh, almost universally, almost universally followed. Okay, so then the name of the, the uh, article follows after that. Okay, here you see that it is an article contained in a review. So the article is put inside inverted commas, inside quotes, and it is not italicized. So whenever you are quoting from an article, it has to come in inverted commas and uh, Roman uh, you know, uh, um, uh, print, and then italics for the name of the book. Okay, the name of the book is, is here, uh, some kind of a journal, the Siwani Review, volume, full stop, 53, comma, NO for number, full stop, four, comma. This is the convention they prefer to follow. Earlier, you know, we used to write uh, capital V for volume. Then we used to have a colon here and a, in, and a semicolon there and this and that. Now everything is discontinued. They are only separating items by commas. If there is a there is a sort of a placeholder before or a descriptor before um, or there are two items, then there is an abbreviation and followed by a full stop like V O L full stop fifty three comma N O full stop four comma nineteen forty five is your date so comma and then pages so instead of saying pages so page to page so P P full stop six forty three to six fifty three full stop. So there's a kind of a readability or a logic in the presentation of the work cited. Okay, as you see, if there is a comma followed by a full stop for the name. Okay, there is a the name of the book in uh, followed by a full stop. And after that, everything is followed by a comma, we are shortly going to come to that. But I just wanted this to register in your minds, how this looks. For the rest of the time, for everything that I describe, there will be examples. Huh? But if you take this as a standard, it would really help. Okay. 
So are all of you with me? Uh, those of you who are understanding this for the first time, are you all with me? Yes. Am I, have I explained yes. this, uh, okay? Or do you want me to repeat with reference to the second one, say, for example? The second one, the only difference is that this is quoted from, the, uh, from an internet source, that the journal is available on the internet, not the hard copy, but the uh, internet version, which you must also mention where you have quoted it from, if, if it's an internet uh, source. Any questions, anyone at this point? I mean, you must be having 150 questions about the layout, but no, but just about these little items that there are. Any questions? Surname first, name, full stop, name of book or name of article, full stop, and then the container and its volume and its, uh, you know, date of publication and the pages. That's the way it is. So now we'll see this in a better form. So this is the form. Okay. Now you see there are two items which are given next to the next to each other: Philip Henshaw's book and Joseph Frank's books book. Okay. So author followed by a full stop. Second item, title of the source followed by a full stop. That is the end of the author and the book. Okay. So there's a break there, as you can see. After that, everything that then comes is about the container or the containers. What is the container or containers? That is the place where you have found this book. Okay. So other than just the name, the place where you have found this article, sorry, other than the name of the author and the name of the article, the article is located somewhere, right? So that location is what you mean by the container. So the title of the container, the contributor, the version of it, the number of it, the publisher, the publication date, and the location. Everything must be mentioned. What do you mean by location? Basically, page numbers, line numbers, para numbers, etc. What is publication date? Yeah, the year of publication or the date of publication, if it's an internet version only. Then, of course, the name of the publisher, if that's possible, the name, the number of that particular uh, journal, the version or the volume of that particular journal. Sometimes you might have summer, autumn, etc. also mentioned. Okay, then the contributor or the, you know, people who have contributed to that writing, and then the title of the Guardian. Here is a little bit lopsided. I think uh, the spacing was wrong. So the Guardian and the Sevani Review are the containers in both the cases, in each of the cases. Okay, does this help? Should I move on? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Showing you now what is a container within a container. The original container is with this particular Sivani review, but you have looked at Sivani review in JSTOR. So that's what you mean when you know container is within a container. So you have to mention both. So you don't end at 643 to 653 full stop. You also add the, uh, the, the JSTOR, uh, you know, hyperlink or the, uh, what do you call it? The, and I'm forgetting the thing. What is it called? This descriptor of the, the article. Okay. So you have to include uh, the, the place where you found this on the internet, the internet source. Okay. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Um... Sorry to interrupt. Can you just explain that container in container? I didn't get that properly. Okay. Container within a container. Fine, fine. I, I'm sure many of uh, you have not understood. So don't feel that you have, you're the only one who has not understood. A container yes. is a is, is a place where you find an article. It could be a journal. Hmm. It could be a collection of critical essays. Hmm. It could be yes. a book where many people have written different chapters. Right? Right. That is what you mean by a container. That is really the place where you have found your article. But, and kind of a reservoir, sort of yeah, a reservoir. Yes, yes. Okay. And the container may be found in an internet version. So that's where you have to give the link of that internet. Like someone has sole access on that, con that container. He okay. or she has, has acquired access and therefore you have to acknowledge that person yeah. or that organization. So JSTOR yeah. has stored these. It might be Shodganga. It might be anybody else who has stored all these. So that's yeah. it. Got clear? It. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. 
Right. Now the very, I have, uh, I will be focusing, the screen is there. You are intelligent people. You are going to look and understand. So I am going to focus on what I find most difficult for students. Otherwise we'll never finish what we are doing today. Okay. So a book very simply mentioned, look at this. It's so neatly mentioned. So the name followed by the surname, followed by comma, the name followed by a full stop, name of book, full stop. And then the um, publisher, in short, always in short, UP means university press, okay? When you are reading in detail from your uh, online source or, or the book you have bought for MLA 9 or whatever, you will find that they insist that you shorten or condense the name of the publisher. They might be like, mm, like say, for example, Marshall and Sons. You only mention Marshall, Marshall, okay? So you just mention the first uh, name. Princeton, UP, and then comma, UP meaning university press, and then the year of publication followed by a full stop, okay? Now, this is a whole book. You have read the whole book and referred from it. So page numbers don't have to be mentioned. Page numbers are mentioned only for journals. Understood? That's the difference, why uh, page numbers are there in journals. If it's by two authors, then first name is the usual style. And the second name is, first name is the usual style, meaning inverted style, where the surname comes first. And the second name is the normal style of uh, naming people, where the name comes first, followed by the surname. Okay. It's a little bit of a technical thing. But remember, if there are only two authors, first one is inverted, second one is straight. Okay. So uh, Jerry Pinto and Naresh Fernandez, full stop, Mumbai Mary Jan, writings on Mumbai, full stop, followed again by comma and, a, uh, and the date of publication, year of publication, full stop. If there are more than two authors, then it would be mentioned as et al. If there are more than two authors, remember, if there are two authors, you have to mention both. Hmm? So if there are three and more, then you have to mention et al. and uh, full stop. Right? And move on. Okay. Unknown authors. No name. So begin directly with the name of the book. Okay. So Beowulf. It's a sort of a longish, uh, you know, uh, poetic narrative translated in prose. So uh, just mention it uh, as translated by whoever it is and edited by who, who has published it and what is it. Okay. Sometimes uh, organizations publish books. So again, separately, you don't have names of authors. So United Nations has published something. The government of India has published something. So then you have to name them as at first as the author. Okay. Right. Right. Nowadays, there's a lot of style of uh, self-publishing of books. That is what they have. See, that is what uh, MLA 9 is all about. They have updated recent trends. Because self-publication has now become so, so common, they have also included that here. There's no separate publisher. It's the person whose writing was published. So that is mentioned in this way. Okay. Some of you might get stuck because your authors might be self-published authors. When I did my PhD, I had a self-published author. Okay, so this is uh, quite possible. Sometimes uh, the original date of the book is also given and the later edition that you are holding in your hands, that is also given. If you want to, then that's fine if you want to mention that. It's not compulsory, always. Okay. E-versions, websites, apps, and also audiobooks. See, these are the latest editions in MLA 9. So you are allowed, researchers, don't be afraid. You are allowed to use these sources if you can authenticate your source. Many of you read audiobooks. So when you are uh, you know, writing your paper, you might mention the, the audiobook and how it is, uh, you know, where you have found it, okay? Instead of quoting exactly in detail. So if it's published like this, then you can mention it. If it's an app where you are reading things, then no problem. Okay. Right. Uh, 
this particular presentation uh, concentrates more on the uh, literary style of uh, writing articles. So sorry, other, uh, you know, people who belong to other disciplines, okay? but this is uh, a little more concentrated on that. So if it's a poem in a book, then how do you mention it? If it's a short story in a book, then how do you mention it? If it's an introduction or a preface or a foreword, you must mention it. Okay. So there the page numbers change and you can immediately find out that the it's, it's uh, you know, a preface where it's mentioned in you know, Roman, numbers okay so uh, here the word preface is mentioned or forward or afterward is mentioned or introduction is mentioned not in capitals but just uh, you know just the word itself followed by a full stop okay <clears throat> because see this person has written the uh, has translated the book and also written the forward so you have to distinguish that. Very often that happens by, because of editors and translators uh, who write forwards in their own books. You have to make that distinction. The rest is uh, pretty clear and apparent. So I'm not talking about it. About an essay in a book, you have to mention the page number. I'm coming directly to that. I'm not mentioning anything else. Just come, coming directly to the page number. Hmm? So that is basically how you do it. Uh, republished essay in a book with original publication details originally published in whatever that is also to be mentioned yeah now i go on to journals okay if that's okay with you so so far we were doing books and uh, other authors now we'll do journals so the the sequence in a journal is author title of the source title of the container number publication date and location same kind of thing okay same thing that we have seen only you me, have to remember that you have to put inverted commas for the title of the source. Yes. yes. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. There's a question by Rekha Vatia. Yes. How to authenticate ebooks and other e information? Nothing. See, every book, everything is considered as the work of an author. You don't have to separate categories by saying ebook, e source, anything like that. Because now, you know, because MLA 9 is from that uh, era where a, all, uh, almost all academic or scholar, scholastic work is published online, right? Publication in print is becoming so expensive that most people are turning to things online. So there is e-publication more than anything else. So if you were to say e-book, 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 you would uh, have a whole long list and nothing else would remain. So they have stopped that even a film or a song or anything, you know, a play, they are all mentioned author, the surname first and uh, name of the author. Okay, so you don't have to be afraid and mention it separately or thing, no, nothing. Only you have to give that hyperlink or you have to give the, not hyperlink, I'm forgetting the name of that, you know, where uh, the URL, <laughs> the URL is, is what you have to mention in your uh, bibliography okay in your work site it, does does my my answer uh, satisfy you yeah is that what you asked yes, me yes, no, separate, no separate list needed not to mention anything separately just uh, quote your sources alphabetically okay, okay. whatever yes. they are maybe a song also as i was telling you, a film anything it may be a documentary right okay. so Thank this you. is the way you mention journals this is also given here Nothing very great. So I'm just uh, going just just uh, look at fall winter. You know, sometimes journals uh, mention that. So if they do, then you mention it. Okay. Uh, one page, then again uh, fifty eight. Um, many pages. PP uh, full stop. PP followed by full stop. Okay. Right. This one is found on the internet. Therefore, you have got the uh, URL. Okay. Most people ask you to write the date of accession, but many people say that it's okay. It doesn't matter. So unless they insist, don't mention it. Unless, you know, the, the journal which you are writing for, if they have asked you to include the date of accession, do it. Otherwise, it's not mandatory. As you can see from all the examples I've given, it's not mandatory. Okay, so these are online sources. This is how you mention. 
if you want if you if you think that there's no other possibility and you would like to access because it might go out of uh, circulation then put the accession date i ask my students uh, to put the accession date if they are afraid that it will go off you know something like this you know uh, might just just go away but um, generally they are not very much bothered whether you are going to or not okay you can quote from websites as you can see you can quote from social media from twitter i'm not explaining all the details but they are there you know you can easily uh, read up so the the guy's uh, twitter name is given you know his uh, twitter id is given uh, the uh, name of that uh, particular site is given and also uh, the quotation and the link the the url of that okay so you can use facebook you can use twitter if it is relevant to your discussion film and television episodes you can uh, show see season 5 episode 23 etc uh, where what is the location what is the container it is netflix so quite possible understand if you quoted from uh, you know from your writers and their interviews then this is the way that you have to mention if there is a personal interview given to you then mention it as as a personal interview otherwise uh, you have to quote if you are quoting from a published interview then this is the way that you have to mention see the word interview coming right at the end if it is explained in the title if the title is self explanatory you don't have to mention interview at the end but if it's not then you might mention interview at the end again phd dissertation has to be mentioned at the end see northwestern u comma phd dissertation and then the link full night i am madam okay now how does the article look i am now going to again screen share okay i'm going to screen share so i'll stop this and uh, go to my my older screen so to look for it which is yeah now the sample that they have given in uh, the mla 9 uh, uh, website is very clearly explained so any of you who are who is a beginner can or or uh, someone who is more familiar with uh, you know other styles of formatting like a mla 7 or anything you will find it very useful see everything is explained over there. yeah this is the way it is all explained page by page everywhere where does the heading come where does everything come any of you who are having trouble formatting your page look at this okay everything is given in great detail i'm not explaining all this because it's all done here you can easily look at it later on okay i will share these links with and my presentation also with uh, with uh, uh, with uh, kirti so that you can all get it. Uh, if you like i can share it right away i mean after i finish my presentation so if you wait a little i can easily send it uh, by email and you can all get it or i can flash it on the screen and you can take a screenshot do a link always helps okay so yeah so this is the way it is given everything is explained even the work cited has got all of these indications okay see everything is explained it's actually very easy you have any doubt go to this article see how they are formatting it hmm? is that clear <clears throat> any of you have any trouble you can always uh, you know 
uh, refer to this and that will be absolutely simple for you. Okay, so then I go back to my presentation and I don't know how much more time I have. Okay, I have about 10 minutes, but I'll try and finish uh, the most useful uh, things from my presentation. Yeah, so in-text citations, okay. So I'll just, uh, this is what I was uh, going to in-text references. So the author title and the page number. Vaishali, can you please uh, switch off your mic? Vaishali, please mute yourself. Yeah, so author title and page number. And uh, this is basically what you do in index citation. And you write the name of the author and you follow it by the page number when for the first time you're talking about this author, first time, okay? If you, in your sentence itself, if you've mentioned the author, then at the end of the, after the quote, you mention only the page number. Beginners, please try and understand. When you are not naming the author, you're just quoting from somewhere, then mention the author and the page number at the end, after the quotation mark, before the full stop. If you have already mentioned the author, then you don't have to mention the book. If the book is, like if it's a single book you have quoted from, then you just put the page number. If your writer, Nancy Barron, has two books you have referred to and cited from and given in your bibliography, then you have to give a short form of the title of her second book, of, of each of her books, okay? So that is a little bit of a thing. That is also explained in your sample paper. It's explained in the Jane Austen paper. It's explained in the paper that I have also shared with you for MLA 9, okay? You don't understand, right? Do you understand? No. Sometimes, you know, you can refer to more than one article by one author. Then how do you, then Baron will not do, no. Baron, which year, which book? Then you have to, instead of writing the year of the book, which we used to do earlier and mention 1906A, 1906B, now they've stopped all that. They just put the first uh, shortened name of that author's book, okay? That makes it easier, more logical. Here, there is no author really, so National Academy, okay? Can't uh, do anything about it. It's mentioned over here like this. Here, you are quoting the writer and her book, and therefore, it's given in this way. Morrison, beloved, the novel, and then page 35. Why it is mentioned like this? Because you might have quoted from Morrison's other uh, novel, A Pair of Blue Eyes, for example. So it's not just beloved, but it's also uh, something else. So like that. So um, these are the different ways in which you can do your uh, thing. As you can see, these longish descriptions are indented three spaces. Okay, Longish descriptions are indented. When you have a long uh, thing, then it, the, the whole uh, uh, description may in, in your bibliography may be indented and mention it in that way. You have to shorten titles of works. How do you shorten? Like this. Give the first two lines. Here, omit the the double vision. You say you want a revolution, just put you. How to avoid huge ships? How to avoid? Is nothing sacred? You can't do much about it. <laughs> you have to mention the whole thing. <laughs> so is nothing sacred, the whole thing. So long and thanks for all the fish, so long. So how do you condense the titles of works, which I was just mentioning some time back that you have to shorten the title of the work if there is more than one work by the same author. So for example, Jane Austen, Mansfield Park, Mansfield Park, you can't say Mansfield, okay. Jane Austen, persuasion, so fine. Northanger Abbey, the whole thing. Because there are just two words now, so you have to mention. If it's more than two words, then you can condense. Sometimes in one sentence, you have two bits of quotation from two different pages. 
mention them like this by a separator 29 and 26 because you've already mentioned the name of the writer Louis Menant. Uh, if it's a play, then this way, okay? If it's uh, Shakespeare's Hamlet, then you know, in this way. So it's like act one, scene uh, five, line 35 to 37, because there are two lines mentioned. Uh, how to indent a quotation this way. Normally, as I told you, people like end justified. They like to put the end in a block. Some people say that, no, it's okay, just uh, left justified will do. So it depends on what style you choose. How to quote poetry? By slashes. Not the whole line like that, one after the other, but by using slashes so that you save on the number of pages that you are about to print for your article or your, uh, you know, your book or your thesis. If it's a sonnet and if you have to and want to because it's more than three lines, then this way. If it's again more than six, five, four, five lines, then this way. E. Cummings is different always. He writes in a different way. So this is the way. Okay. If it's drama, then this way. If you want to quote it and embed it in a sentence and this way in the what is given in the bottom and if you want to quote whole chunks from it as a dialogue then this way nothing very different or difficult it's, it's the normal type but it's indented as you can see it's indented if you are quoting more than three lines then indented as usual Quotations within quotations, they are always a problem, no? How to write quotations within quotations, it's always a problem. So you mention the name of the book and then put it in double quotes with a single quote for, the, uh, for what is there in that second book. First book, always double quotes. Second book, always in single quotes in the middle. A little bit of a problem. How do you use punctuation? You will, of course, uh, put commas to separate uh, different uh, parts of the sentence. Okay. He writes, he notes, there should be a comma preceding it. Okay. Asks, etc. Following it or preceding it. Yeah, so we are done. This uh, I'm given my credits to Umangi and Udayan. If any of you think that you would like to look at the um, articles once more, I don't mind, but uh, I have otherwise finished. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Nilakshi Roy, ma'am, for such an enlightening and informative session. I'm sure we all will carry your words with us. I would like to now head out over to my colleague, Ms. Bipasha Roy, to moderate the question and answer sessions. I'd now like to invite Dr. Geeta Sahu, ma'am, for the vote of thanks. Uh, not now. Uh, we'll have the question and answer session, yes. after which uh, Dr. Geeta Sahu will deliver the formal vote of thanks. Bipasha, can you please... Uh, Go ahead with the questions that are that we can see in the chat box. There yes, are questions in the chat box. Bipasha, could you please read them? Um, so, if anyone have any questions, please, you're open. Feel free to open up and ask it in the chat box. Yeah, I'm also yeah. looking at the questions. Uh, I think they are all used uh, already. We have discussed. Yes, we have discussed these yes. in the course of the yes. Yeah. So the most important thing, if you if you still have doubts, any of you, then the most important thing is that um, you have to 
treat everything that you quote from as a source and not distinguish them, whether they are books or films or anything else. So, you know, they, they're all part of a collection of sources. So mention them as, you know, author first, author's surname first and author's name first, followed by the name of the source. What it is, is immaterial. Just that if it's an e-source and you want to acknowledge and you want to share the URL, then you must share it. If you can, then the, put the accession date of those databases which you know are changeable. That's when you definitely give the accession date. You know, when you know that it's a database which might go out of print, it's always better to give a uh, accession date. Otherwise, I mean, if your if your guide insists or if the journal which is publishing your work insists, then you give the accession date. And also the time, ma'am, the accession the time, time, the time, date and time. Yeah, date and time. Normally, right. we like to give that. Ma'am, one thing that I have noticed is uh, when uh, articles undergo this plagiarism check, yeah. when we write the name of the author along with the uh, the work, the work is cited, the title of the work, even that is shown as, you know, uh, I mean, that is marked red. So to avoid that, uh, what we, I mean, what I usually do is put the year that the work has been published in so that, you know, it, it doesn't show as a plagiarized uh, thing. And then in the work cited, the, the year, uh, you know, explains for itself which work I am referring to. So it's so, a matter of your writing style, you know. If you mm -hmm. can incorporate this style as, you know, I am a mature writer and I know how to cite my stuff, then you don't have to mention the author a hundred times. Mm -hmm. you, will, you will just put the, the year, you know, that, that's it, you know. So mm -hmm. that is something that you'll have to uh, take care of. Yeah, it is true that, that uh, it will pop up because if you use too many times, names too many times. Then or even the title of the work. Then that, that show shows as plagiarized, yeah. Also, you, uh, I mean, I keep on telling my students to refrain from quoting large chunks from critics. Stop quoting, mention one or two words, paraphrase it. Show as if, you know, you have really imbibed what that person has written. That is scholarship. I mean, we are all using somebody else's writing, okay? So that is not a problem. Yes, uh, Suman, uh, audiobooks may not have PP. It is okay. Also, you know, Kindle editions, we didn't talk about it. Kindle editions often don't have a page. They have a percentage. Some of them help you with calculation, but my, uh, you know, Apple, whatever it is that, uh, yeah, what is called, iPad, that doesn't ever give me any page number. You know, sometimes they are formatted along with page numbers, but my uh, Kindle does not. So I have had to put it like that, yeah. There is something called as location, which is which that's appears what? at the end. So exactly. location this that of just, this, location just, this of this. Yeah, that just gives you a percentage, you know, of the amount that you've written. So I use the location in in mm -hmm. my uh, uh, you know my uh, work cited uh, list, but I'm never satisfied. You know, I don't think that that's the right way. I wish that absolutely. So they yeah. they converted it, and I have gone online and found uh, this discussed in many forums that this should be now made uh, like you know mandatory whenever you are using publishing something on. Uh, uh, on in the iPad format or in the Kindle format, it should come with a page number, but they're lazy. They don't give you. <laughs> yeah. 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 So That's very right. relevant, very pertinent questions. I, I'm not even sure whether I answered them very well. So I don't know. I mean, they're still finding ways to uh, give a foolproof, um, you know, methodology by which you can uh, cite online or virtual sources, you know, whether it is audio or whether it is uh, even Kindle editions. It's mm -hmm. really difficult. Yeah. Ma'am, and sometimes what happens is, uh, for instance, when I was writing my thesis, there was this play by Chetan Datar. Uh, and Chetan Datar wrote in uh, Marathi and Hindi, I and mm -hmm. I had to translate it in English, but the work was not published. So in that case, it was difficult for me to quote uh, things from his work. So, and I had to put in work cited as NP and not published, something of that sort to make it relevant to the, you know, uh, to make my work look authentic. Mm 
Yeah, um, if if uh, the, because it's a play, if it has acts or scenes, then maybe you can mention just that, you know, that in act two, scene three, he says this, but you can't uh, quote the lines. I know, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Unless you made your own kind of a rough copy of the manuscript and put page numbers in that, and no one will mm -hmm. have access to it anyways. So how are they going to verify? No? So that right. becomes a problem. I, just out of curiosity, what book was it that you translated? Which Ma'am, these are uh, these were plays by Chetan Datta, uh, Mata Hidimba. Oh, okay. A play called Mata Hidimba, which was a dance drama, yes. and which was uh, performed. Okay. And I got the handwritten script from someone, which I used as part of my uh, PhD work, PhD thesis. So much that people have to do. I mean, I'm just addressing this to the general audience that there are so many things that we often do when you know we want to work on it and we have to translate text we have to take help from so many sources <laughs> and know. i was fortunate to get it from someone who performed okay. the text i mean and chetan datar is no more i didn't oh, and there I is know. nothing in, in there is nothing in writing uh, but then i was fortunate to get the handwritten copy of the text who was used by the performer Okay. That was used by the performer. I ask these questions because I have seen his Ek Madhav Bhag being performed. And okay. by Mona Ambegaugar. It's a, it's a kind of a uh, solo play. So mm -hmm. it's a very nice play. So I just asked which play. So thank you very much, Kirti, for, uh, for inviting me. I hope that this was useful. I will be sharing uh, right now, I think, uh, in your email box, uh, the, the, you know, uh, presentation and other things as documents, as Word documents. So uh, you can, or PDFs. Uh, the, the two articles are PDFs, but uh, my PowerPoint presentation I can share with you. So you can share sure, with your audience. No problem. Sure, ma'am. Yeah. And uh, now I would like, I request Gita to propose the vote of thanks, the formal vote of thanks. Gita, Dr. Gita Sahu, over to you. Yes, thank you so much, Nilakshi, uh, ma'am. In September 2017, when I had my CAS interview, Nilakshi Ma'am was one of the subject experts. And it is so good to see you today, although it is a virtual interaction that we had, but it is always a pleasure to interact with uh, Nilakshi Ma'am. And uh, this topic, which is so relevant to all of us, MLA 9th edition, although I believe that it is still not implemented full-fledged because People are still using the 8th edition for the yeah, PhD yeah. thesis, but then we all need to get uh, ready with the 9th edition. Uh, the MLA formats ensure that even as researchers, we are um, kept, uh, you know, we have to keep ourselves uh, uh, abreast with the latest uh, uh, referencing formats. Uh, as uh, there, there are a, lo a lot of people over here who have uh, joined who are new researchers, so I just uh, thought uh, I should mention that uh, uh, Microsoft Word does give you a ready-made reference, you know, like you, you just have to add uh, things to it, like the name of the author, the, the, the name of the text, the page numbers, and it does give you a ready-made uh, reference, but that is still done in the seventh edition. The eighth edition never came out, and of course, after that, now the ninth edition is something that uh, probably we could uh, you, you know, write to Microsoft that they should now be coming up with new versions and uh, uh, of uh, referencing, which uh, would make uh, the work of uh, uh, young researchers a little uh, easier. Uh, also, ma'am, um, thank you very much for uh, sharing uh, your uh, PowerPoint because this is going to be extremely important uh, to everyone, very useful. I had started taking pictures, but since you said you would share the PPT, I stopped because this is now going to be very relevant for uh, all of us. Yeah, I just sent it. I just sent it. Sure. Keep we'll post it on the WhatsApp group. We'll yes, ma'am. I'll do that we'll right away. Uh, Kirti, uh, what is your email? I hope I've sent it to the right person. Just tell me what is your it email. It is K-N-A-K-H-A-R-E. Okay, no, 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 no. I haven't got, I haven't sent I'll, it. I'll WhatsApp my email I'll, ID to you, ma'am. Send it again. I'll send it. I'll do that. Also, thank you very much, Suman ma'am. Uh, she has joined us today. Even uh, we had a very thank nice you. session with uh, her yesterday. Uh, thank you to the principals of both the colleges for supporting this collaboration. Yeah. Uh, because Nilakshi ma'am, we have a, a MOU, the two colleges have yes. an MOU, the English departments and the IQAC. 
So thank you to the principals, the vice principals, the IQSC coordinators who were there with us yesterday, even the HODs who were there with us yesterday for the uh, inaugural session. Uh, thank you faculty who have been with us since uh, yesterday who have posted very relevant uh, questions. Uh, of course, a big thank you to my PSDS team and also the Literary Society of SIWS College. Our student support is everything and you know they know more than us. They are more tech savvy and uh, we really value that kind of a support. Uh, Brianna, my president, who is leading the entire team and of course, there are students from SIWS College and this is also a very nice way for students to interact with each other and work in collaboration with each other. So this collaboration then extends not just to teachers, but also to students. Uh, um, thank you to the compares for today, the technical team for handling everything. And of course, last but not, not the least, my dear friend, uh, Kirti. <laughs> so thank, thank you, so Gita. Thank you, Gita. A warm hug. <laughs> <laughs> So the feedback form has been uh, posted. Has it been posted, Brianna, already? No, ma'am, not yet. I'll post it right now. Yes, so please post the feedback form in the chat box and everybody please fill it up before you leave the meeting. May I just say uh, something in praise of this collaboration? Uh, mm -hmm. Collaborations are the order of the day. You know, without collaborations, academics is just not going anywhere. Uh, so this is a very good venture that you have. And gradually, you know, you should form your own consortium and have more events like this so that academic exchange and uh, a healthy, uh, you know, space can be created for scholars to exchange. Uh, their knowledge and their difficulty, their, you know, their shared experiences. And like, say, for example, just Kirti shared how she translated uh, a play to, to do her PhD thesis and what kind of uh, difficulty she encountered. All this is so, so, uh, you know, invaluable in, uh, mm. in the, the lifespan of a young scholar. So yeah, very nice, very good collaboration. Mm. And thank in you. Fact, in fact, yesterday I got an idea from what Dr. Suman was saying that uh, we have this MOU is valid for three years. So last year we have done events, activities for students. This year it was for teachers. And next year probably it could be more research-based where Kirti and I take up uh, a collaborative research project and do something about it. You know, we could kind of think on those lines. Definitely, Gita. Looking forward <laughs> to work with you. <laughs> so Suman, ma'am, would you like to say something? Yes, uh, first of all, appreciation to Dr. Nilakshi Roy for this wonderful presentation. It was a great learning. Thank you. And uh, she uh, also supported what I mentioned yesterday uh, of how you can utilize different resources, not just journals, but blogs, articles, plays, poetry, and so many other sources. So there's no dearth of resources available for researchers to tap. Unfortunately, when uh, we at the time when we were doing our research, they said, no, if it has to look authentic, stick to journal articles or books. So now, now there is so much of uh, uh, availability of resources. <laughs> so thank you for Thank you, Dr. Nilakshi. Thanks, Dr. And, th <laughs> and I would support your collaborative yeah. uh, venture. Yeah. And whenever I'm, you feel I could help, I, so, I'm, I'll be happy to. Yes, the pleasure is ours. We would love to you know, take your guidance and expertise. <laughs> <clears throat> so Looking forward. Have been voted. I request everyone so please fill it right now. Thanks for your invitation. Very thoughtful and kind of you that, uh, you know, that you remembered me and uh, very humbling and lo nice learning experience. I wish I could have attended yesterday as well. I wanted to. But yesterday I had a family, you know, a medical uh, thing to attend to. In the family, Kirti knows about it. So I had a doctor's visit during that time, 4.30 to uh, 5.30. It lasted about, till about 6. So 
Ma'am, early years of my career, I have referred to the textbook that Nilak Shiroi, Kavita Peter, <laughs> Sushmita Day. Yes, <laughs> that true. big but... textbook that we refer to as young teachers of business communication <laughs> with a literature background. So that was our Bible, yes. you know. You, it was such a comprehensively done textbook. Uh, thank you for that too. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Oh, it yes, sounds bad. And ma'am, Paromita has given her regards to yeah, She yeah. was hey, hi, there you. with us yesterday, but today for some reason she has not been able to join. But even in the morning when we met in the college, she said yes. Okay. You know, give her regards to Nila. Do say hi to her. We are old friends. <laughs> uh, thank you, Novita. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Nilakshi Roy, ma'am, from every one of us present over here. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Kashish. Thanks a lot. Okay. Shall we then say bye-bye? Yes, ma'am. Sure. Bye, ma'am. Take care. Bye, thanks. Thank you. And, uh, Thank you. Wish you many more successful collaborative uh, ventures. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye, Suman, ma'am. Same year. Exactly. And I hope to meet you in person someday. Yeah, me too. Yes. Me too. Where are you based out of? Uh, Goregaon. Goregaon. Okay. So hope we bump into each other sometime. Yes. <laughs> I've heard so much about you. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, I have heard about you in, in recent circles where mm -hmm. uh, I have heard seen names of presenters. I found you, but uh, unfortunately we haven't met face to face. It was Dr. Mala Pandurang, uh, Professor Mala Pandurang, who suggested your names, okay. uh, Dr. Suman uh, Munkur's name, as well as okay. uh, yours, ma'am, for this. Achha. For this workshop, Mala is always there to you know to guide us through and help us work more and more. I'm retired and she won't leave me alone, so <laughs> very happy for that. Keeps me alive, and working and studying still, and not giving up everything and vegging out. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Bye, then. Bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Suman, ma'am. Thank okay, you, Nilakshi. Welcome. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, ma'am. So, participants, if you have filled the feedback form, you can leave the meeting. Thanks, Nita and Kirti. Thank you, Nita, ma'am. Nita Dhote so, is here. Nita, Nita ma'am. Hello. Good evening. Hi. <laughs> Good to see you all both. Yes, go to see you, ma'am. <laughs> okay, bye then. I fill the form. Yeah. Bye, bye, ma'am. Yeah, bye, bye, ma'am. Yeah, bye. Bye, ma'am. Take care. Uh, so, Brianna, I think we can keep the meeting on till five twenty-five. Yes, ma'am, sure. I've sent it one last time for anybody who may have missed out on the phone. Yes, maybe 5.25 or till 5.30, you can keep the meeting on and keep posting the feedback form in the chat box. Yes, sure. I'll do that. Do what else. So, can Kirti ma'am and I leave? Yes, ma'am, sure. Yeah. Thank you so much, ma'am. Yeah, I'll see you all in college and this was really a very good job that you all have done as a team. You were a great support. Thank you, ma'am. Everything practically has been managed by the students. So, yes, a, a very, very big thank you to you all. Thank you, thank so you much, Diana. This is the second time that, you know, we are working with you and your team of students. You are a constant, Brianna. So Thank you, ma'am. And when uh, Gita ma'am said that Brianna is there, I mean, she'll be handling most of the things. I was, uh, you know, uh, at ease mm -hmm. because last year it went very smoothly. And as we know, HR college students are really accomplished. So uh, a big clap to all of you, your entire team, Zahara. What was the other person's name, Gita? Aisha. Yeah, Ibrahim. Yes. Ibrahim. Aisha. And yes, the entire team. Brianna, can you just name the entire team? Who sure, ma'am. Ma'am, we had Vidhi with us. We had Paridhi. We had Simran and Kavya from the social media team. Today, we have the digital team. We have Asmi. We have Karan. We have Achal. Uh, I think, yes, they have joined. I don't know whether they are still here. But uh, all of them were there at the start. 
and as compares we had zahra and aisha and then we also had ibrahim and jojo overlooking social media and digital perspective right so yes, i would also yes. like to thank kashish tadi and vipasha roy these are our fyb com students and they are doing this for the first time kashish i appreciate your effort very well done thank and you also vipasha you. also vipasha and i hope to see y'all connected with english literary association even yes. the next year y'all will be part of of you know this mou the activity that we undertake yes ma'am sure thank, thank you questions and thank you bipasha and briana did we have yes, did we have advice in our team because they need to be trained you know advice and advice did we have in yes, our yes yes we had advice in our team but advice not for this activity since we had the previous event the day before ha huh, but advice right. were very much there Yes, because you know there is a training for succession. I keep saying Correct. all the time. Yes, yes, yes. Every yes, event yes. Uh, and Kirti, just for your information, this is the tenth year of off the cuff being the intercollegiate uh, event for the tenth consecutive year we are going to conduct. And Brianna has a very big responsibility on her uh, shoulder along with the entire team, where the whole college has already been talking about it as to how big we are going to make it, and you know. Last year we had thirty-eight sponsors. Wow, wow, that's yes, amazing, wow. Geeta. I I remember uh, coming as a, I mean, judging as the a, event. As a judge, yes. yes, as a judge, and you do it brilliantly. It's so well organized I and very students. well thought out, also, because it's a very different kind of an event with so many qualifying rounds, and each qualifying round is a challenge by itself. so i mean all it's uh, it's an amazing effort that is you know I, that that and it shows it shows and i'm I, i am looking forward to what is going to happen because it is a 10th year <laughs> so let me know what you're planning to do sure ma'am definitely we well, would love to have you yeah, participants yeah. i would ask kashish yes, and yes. Uh, bepasha to participate sure you can sure ma'am contingent and uh, we would be looking forward to having you as one of our judges absolutely <laughs> ma'am <laughs> we will yeah. send in the list of events soon let's once we wrap up with all of this now this is our next course of action so yeah. all of it will be let out soon. <laughs> and we've never had a you know um, a standard set of uh, events events yes it's correct it's very flexible as to how the current batch wants to do it how the presidents are right entire team designs Absolutely. it for that particular year Absolutely. so let's see we are all looking forward to it briana absolutely ma'am i, I believe geeta these are the elements that make hr what hr is all about yes. so these are the building blocks you know all yes, these absolutely. go to make you i mean your brand for what it is known today so it is because of our students Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, ma'am, for these really, really encouraging words. Thank you, Kirti, ma'am, and Geeta, ma'am, both of you for your support for the last two years with this session. It has been so smooth. Any doubts in the group, and you have always adjusted. So thank you so much. Thank you, Brianna. And then I think it's already almost sure. five twenty-two. We can wait for five minutes, uh, Brianna. I think Kirti, ma'am, and I can leave. Yes. Okay, ma'am. Sure. By five thirty, we leave for five minutes. Bye, Geeta. Okay. We need to catch up on uh, a few things sure. which we will discuss uh, over uh, the next couple of days. Okay, I think the next thing now is the report for these two days. Yes, the report okay. and also the uh, and also something else that we could discuss. Sure. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, Geeta. Yeah. See you. Yeah, bye. 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 Thank Have you, ma'am. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Have a great evening, all of you. Thank you. Have a great evening, ma'am. Bye. 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 All those left to fill the feedback form, it's put in the chat box. After filling the form, you can leave.